Hey up everyone and welcome back to another video. Really on the grind in 2021 and I'm planning on not running out of steam at all. So here is my review of the GTX 770 in 2021. This graphics card released all the way back in May of 2013 which is, makes it almost 8 years old now. And to be fair, the performance isn't too bad actually all things considered its main limiting factor is the two gigs of vram this only has two gigs of vram and it does kind of hold it back so let's see how this previous 399 dollars rrp graphics card compares to the games in 2021 starting off the benchmarks with everyone's favorite builder shooter battle royale thing fortnite and at pro settings which is essentially everything low fortnite actually did pretty well bagging an average of 165 fps and a one percent low of 93 and a 0.1 percent low of 26 i must add the 26 is probably from when i was dropping from the bus that is when the fps is the most unstable and it's where it matters the least because you're just dropping in essentially so it doesn't really matter i can report it was a perfect gaming experience anyway and i was actually surprised how well fortnite runs on all the gpus i know this gpu was only about five years old four years old when fortnite came out but still pretty good and the next game up is a personal favorite of mine and it's f1 2020 and i'll be honest i thought the 770 would have performed a bit better in this game i'm not going to lie but still if you've got a 60 hertz monitor however we managed to get 71 fps on average on the high settings in australia in the wet which is pretty much as intensive as it will get and we've got a one percent low of 54 fps following that up with a 0.1 percent low of 32 fps on the high preset not too bad it it wasn't stuttery that might have been from when the benchmark was triggered or writing to the disc so yeah it, it was fine you'll get an all right gaming experience on this i really really tried to test this gpu so i thought hey let's load up cyberpunk we did have to drop the resolution to 900p but i'm surprised even though it's running below minimum specs what cdpr recommended we're okay well i say we're okay we only managed to get 30 fps at 900p everything low but that was in the most intensive part of the map which was the corpo plaza or downtown it was one of them areas but when we went out of it a bit it started to creep up into the low 40s high 30s so not too bad at all i'm still surprised this game managed to run on the 770 i mean it didn't run well but credit where credit's due even with two gigs of vram it ran pretty well all things considered next game in the benchmark is trusty old gta 5 and gta 5 did pretty well i must add bagging 92 fps while going through downtown with the high settings the benchmarking was done in story mode story mode tends to be a bit more optimized than online no matter what you've got with online it tends to run quite a bit worse but to be honest judging from this it won't be detrimental to the player experience so gta 9 still will be fine if you want me to test that i can test it but it's not really indicative to the actual performance of story mode there was also no stutter to report of on GTA, so everything's all good there. Okay, the last game, Call of Duty Warzone. I'm not impressed at all by the performance. We did manage to get 42 FPS on average, but playing the game, it was not smooth at all. It was quite an awful experience, to be honest. I'm not sure if this is just my case because I've seen other people benchmark it as well and it seems fine. I don't think it's anything else to do with my system. Just letting you know it did perform quite badly in my case so just a warning. I'm not saying it will happen to you but it definitely happened to me so just letting you know. And this is reflected by the lowest 0.1% low of 7 FPS and it really did feel quite bad. So the data backs up the experience. So just saying it's bad in my case but might not be bad in your case and it might be fine so that brings a conclusion to the benchmarking if there's any more games you want me to benchmark i can have a look into them i'm obviously i'm not going to benchmark like a gtx 480 on cyberpunk or anything like that so yeah make sure it's sensible and i'll definitely have a look into it okay after all that benchmarking is this gpu worth it in 2021 
considering that I got it for about £37, which is about, I don't know what that is in dollars, I'll put it on the screen. Yes, I'd say it's worth it. But if you're getting it at, let's say, £50 and above, I'd say hold off and get something newer. I was impressed that it even managed to get Cyberpunk to even start, let alone play it. We did have to drop it down to 900p, but we still managed a stable 30 FPS. So we come to the main question, is this worth it in 2021? And I'd say, as always, maybe. If you can get it for about under $50, I'd say, I don't know what the market's like in America, but if you can get it for under £40 in Britain, I'd say, yeah, go for it. It's the two gigs of VRAM which is really holding it back to be honest in 2021. You want at least four gig and sometimes even four gig may even cause you to struggle. And now we're done with all that, we've come to the end of the video. So if you like the video, like it. If you liked it even more, subscribe. And let me know what other graphics cards you want me to test as long as it isn't something stupid like a 3090 because I can't exactly get my hands on them. Well, I don't think anyone can actually. So if you want me to test anything, just let me know and see ya.